It's a valid point. All right, on to the final trailer, Roadhouse for Amazon Prime. Before we start, do you have insurance? What? Is your coverage good? Like, you have dental? Oh, haha. Is there a hospital nearby? Is it, like, too far? It's about, like, 25 minutes, I'd say. I just slapped you. Are you all right? What? So you like to fight. You ever win? No one ever wins a fight. This ain't the Holiday Inn, pal. I am. I'm moving. A friend of mine suggested I come talk to you. I own a roadhouse out in the Florida Keys. Lately, it's been attracting the wrong clientele. I can pay you good money. Judging by your car, you need that. Well, I like my car. Think about it. Come on, bro. I know who you are. Elwood Dalton. Big fan, man. That guy's got a knife under his shirt. You just take a big step back and pop me in the face. You can do it. Tell me about this bouncing. He acts all nice, like he's Mr. Rogers or something, but then he'll haul off. <laughs> really interesting guy, overall. Brand wants to take the roadhouse away from me. He wants to build some resort. I should warn you, people have a certain way of getting things done around here. Hey, fellas. Looks like you're having a smashing night. Dalton! I got a tip for you. Don't let no one get this close. Come on, bro. Let me guess. You know, threaten me. Tell me to get out of town. I get the impression that you can't be threatened. Once Knox is on the job, it's over, baby. It takes a lot to get me angry, but when I am, I just can't let go. People seem a little aggressive around here. Is that one a friend of yours? No, I just broke his arm. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Let's take a deep breath. I'm going right. to preface this. I'm going to preface this by saying, first of all, I like Jake Gyllenhaal. Mm-hmm. I think Jake Gyllenhaal is a fucking amazing actor. Yes. Like, super talented. Like, underrated and super talented. Second of all, I love Doug Lyman as a director. Born Identity, uh, Edge of Tomorrow, Swingers. Guy knows how to make a good flick. You know, especially when you get lean into the into the the action genre. Um, but uh, first of all, I'm not a Conor McGregor guy. Yeah, I, I, I can't I can't stand Conor McGregor, mm-hmm. uh, not at all. Um, but dude, for something like Roadhouse, and I and I'm sure it's just because I'm o- older. Uh, Roids will do that, and he wondered why they wouldn't let him come back to the UFC until he drug tested clean. I mean, like, look. I grew up through the 80s, so I have an appreciation for 80s action movies. And I do feel like there are certain things that people tr- forget about what made 80s, made 80s movies so fucking endearing. It was the simplicity. Mm-hmm. It was the people involved, the direction, and the actors. It could be the most simplistic plot, but there was just something about it, whether it was some levity or or just the way... Abs- the absurdity of the situation. Mm-hmm. They d- and when you blend all that together and you just have that 80s vibe, these movies just resonated with me. Mm-hmm. And look, Roadhouse is not a fucking masterpiece movie. No. It's not an Oscar movie. But it is a fucking dope-ass 80s movie. Mm-hmm. A fucking amazing 80s movie. Patrick Swayze is fucking awesome. As Dalton, Sam Elliott shows up halfway through and serenades you with his voice. Love Roadhouse. This trailer pissed me off. It pissed me off. I was just like, no. It, it, bingo. And Sparky, that's something we're definitely going to talk about in this segment. And I want to get everyone's thoughts on this shit. Because I feel like it's always been an issue 
People have always, I mean, for the last 20 years, remakes, remakes, remakes. The fuck? This one sucks. Oh, this one's uh, good. Blah, blah, blah. But it's always a point of contention. Yeah. Either they love it or they fucking hate it because it bastardizes or mm-hmm. it, it, it it's disrespectful of the source material. Yep. Yep. I No, go ahead. No, I'm just going to say this trailer does nothing for me. I'm going to watch it because we're going to have to cover it. Mm-hmm. I'll watch it. But, dude, the minute I feel like it is just nothing near as good or as simple yet entertaining as the original Roadhouse, I'm going to get fucking mad. I'm already going to get mad when Conor McGregor shows up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, oh, let me go back real quick here. Uh, I'm a big MMA guy, so I like the idea of the story, updating it. We will see if it lands or not, though. Uh, that's why Top Gun Maverick as well played on the same principles. Exactly. What if it wasn't named Roadhouse and it was his own movie? Dude, that's a different story because it is called Roadhouse. It is called Roadhouse. If I saw this, if it was a different movie, I'd be like, this looks dumb because Conor McGregor's in it. Okay? Now, if you want to keep moving around the GoPro, say, well, what if Conor McGregor wasn't in it? I'd be like, well, then I'll probably, you know, be like, oh, it looks interesting. But you got a douchebag in the movie, and it's a remake of a fucking movie that I happen to adore. And a, a, a classic. It is a classic. A classic. Never seen the OG. Don't care to watch this one. Conor McGregor seems like a prick. I don't want to see him. Uh, Conor's my... Hey, and like I said, man, that's why remakes are such an interesting conversation because some people think mm-hmm. something looks good right? compared to something that other people are like, oh, that's shit because the original's better. Now, I didn't hate the trailer when I first saw it. Um, Now that I'm seeing it again, I'm still... I, I don't hate it. I think it's mostly because of Jake Gyllenhaal, um, and the action looks kind of cool. Now, that being said, uh, if, if you don't know this, and maybe you do or don't if you are or not in the discard, but... One thing that was a rule in my home when we had uh, roommates back in the day <laughs> was if you were channel flicking, this is Cappadocian, the rule was you had to stop and watch Roadhouse. If it was on, if you were flan- channel flicking, at least give it 10 minutes of time or watch the whole fucking movie. That was the kind of respect yeah. that you give Roadhouse, right? That that That's what it is. And it's exactly what you say. The, the 80s movies had a certain trope. They were a certain way. It was the simplicity. It was the action. And it was even the absurdity. Yeah. And some things just don't need that. Now, I get if technology can be a constraint. I understand sort of things. This was not a movie that said, technology held us back. We should make a new one. No, that was <laughs> yeah. not the case at all. This does not need to Let's happen. Let's just move it to the keys. <laughs> does not need to happen. So I, I just, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm going to be a... I'm going to watch it. Like I said, I didn't hate the trailer. I'm going to assume already, and maybe it's wrong for me to do that, it's probably not going to be good. And, you know, at the end of the day... Um, a lot of people are going to say, yeah, probably shouldn't have remade that. But And look, I'm going to give it, like I said, I'm going to give it its fair shake, uh, fair, uh, shake in court. I'm going to give it its day in court and, and watch it. And, you know, and, and if I'm wrong, if it turns out to be really good and really entertaining because it's got good writing and maybe Conor McGregor isn't a fucking loser in it, I'll be like, oh, hey, you know what? I was wrong. This is actually pretty good. Mm-hmm. But, man, like you said, it's not like fucking the uh, 1987 Roadhouse was a movie that was screaming for a fucking remake due to limitations. You had a big star in it, and Patrick Swayze at the time. Uh, it was, I believe it was a Joel uh, Joel Silver production, so you knew you were going to get high quality stuff there. You know, I mean, it, it was a typical '80s action mm-hmm. movie that just ascended over time. The only thing that would make me feel better about this film was if Connor gets held up his stuff. <laughs> right? Yeah. What's uh, what's uh, that big uh, big guy's name when the bear falls on him? I can't remember what his name was in the movie, but that was hilarious. See, that that that's a slippery slope, Jay Hill, because you, the title is already on the fucking movie. I'm going into it, not even thinking about the that's original fair. thing in its own thing. And I, I guess I, I respect that's that fair. decision. Yep. Uh, Amazon Prime movie, so it already lost three points. I mean, you take that into consideration as well, uh, the types of movies they've done. I'm going to go into it, but it is called Roadhouse, so I can't just be like, well, it's not called Roadhouse. I mean, I'm, oh, Jay Hill, give me, a, give me a movie that you loved growing up, that you really enjoyed. Why don't they just call it Boathouse? No, I want, I want Jay Hill to answer this question because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call him out if he answers it the way I think he's going to answer it. But give me a movie that you loved in the 80s absolutely loved or any movie i'll wait call it boathouse something that is near and dear to your heart or that you really enjoyed he's gonna say tootsie i feel it <laughs> <laughs> i'm waiting just something about dustin hoffman in that wig i don't know i'm waiting face okay face off okay cool face off uh they say they're making a face off remake and it's got 
Uh, give me an act. Give me somebody you don't like in in, uh, in 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 professional sports. That's not really an actor. Who's somebody you can't stand? Somebody that you can't stand. Give me somebody. Anybody. Somebody you absolutely can't stand. Jake Paul. Cool. Starring Jake Paul, and let's see, somebody who's a good actor, but you know maybe not as like Nick Cage great. Uh, but anyway, well, Jake Gyllenhaal. We'll say Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, Jake Paul in a face-off remake. You're going to go into that thinking, I'm not going to worry about the title, but I'm going to go in enjoying it. Don't tell me yes, Jay Hill. Don't tell me yes. There's no fucking way. And I won't, I won't believe you if you say yes. There's no way. But that's why it's also different for everybody. So you have to understand like why I am not happy about this roadhouse. Because you have a shitbag like Conor McGregor, and you're and, and and it's a movie that didn't need a fucking remake. Face Off doesn't need a remake. Oh well, man, I don't. Know. Fair enough. I mean, hey, that's fair enough, buddy. <laughs> fair enough. Uh, but I want to get you guys' good thoughts on this trailer. But I also think I want to talk about is remakes in general. What are some of your favorite remakes? Now, keep in mind when I ask this, I want to know because uh, if you've seen the original. And the remake itself. I want to know what one stood out to y'all. I'm going to go first. The first one that I think of, dude, and it's it's one that came out recently, and I, and I fucking love it. And I used to watch the original because my grandpa used to watch it. And I was just like, I wasn't a John, Way guy, a John Wayne guy growing up. I was like the Duke. I was like, okay, cool. It's whatever. I think the thing about this is I'm a huge MMA guy, so I kind of want – and that's fine. And that's I, – I get that. I get that. But – I'm just saying, like, take something into something that you really enjoy and then have them fucking just tear it apart and do something different. You're not going to go into it thinking, I'm not worried about what it's called. It's just, it's, but uh, again, that's different. It's different for you. Maybe you don't like the original as much as I do or other people do. Apps, Top Gun Maverick absolutely killed it. But I mean, that's not really a remake. That's, that would be a reboot that or would is that be a, a revival? A revival. A reboot to me is like something like, um, let me see here. True Grit. The original True Grit with John Wayne came out, won all sorts of awards. I think, I think he actually even got nominated. It was like his only Oscar nomination. And then the Coen brothers did True Grit, and it starred Jeff Bridges, Matt Damon, Haley Steinfeld, Josh uh, Brolin, Barry Pepper. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got a sweet cast. Now, this movie is not only more uh, um, respectful of the book, more closely tied to it, but it is just, in my opinion, a better movie. It captures the essence of the original, but it is a better performance from, uh, I thought uh, Jeff Bridges was incredible as Rooster Cogburn. And Haley Steinfeld went toe-to-toe with him in every scene with her, like, her feisty tenacity. She was really, really good. In it. And the movie got nominated for 10 Oscars. Didn't win a single one, which is a bummer. But Haley Steinfeld and Jeff Bridges got nominated. Also got nominated for Best Picture. I thought True Grit was a fantastic remake. In every fucking way possible. I fucking love this movie. Going back and watching the original and having seen the original, I was just like, man, this is such a massive upgrade yeah. from the John Wayne movie. And even though that movie was a huge hit, has a huge following, I felt like this was infinitely better. Huge fan of this movie, Tone. What do you got? Well, I did the opposite of you. You did the opposite. You want shitty remakes. I went with shitty remakes since you did... Good remakes. Um, <laughs> I'm going to start off with, once my thingy loads. Come on, thingy. Uh, first one I want to talk about is uh, a really quite recent one as well, too, um, was Hellboy 2019. Ugh. Dave Harbour was actually fine in it playing Hellboy. It, it seems like a role that would be built for him. Uh, but the the movie was pretty fucking shitty. I mean, you already had it quite established not long ago that with with Ron Perlman in it and yeah. Guillermo del Toro. It just felt like a, a, a dollar store version of that. There were some decent scenes in there that was kind of cool when he picked up the big sword, which was very close to the comics. And there were elements of it that felt very, you know, still like it yeah. was good close to like the, 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 the graphic novel stuff, but it was very few and far between being. JL there, says but. you haven't actually seen that. You haven't seen the the new Hellboy or the one with Ron Perlman, the, uh, the one that came out before that. If you haven't seen it, it's awesome. 
Hellboy and Hellboy. Hellboy Hell, yeah, Hellboy one and two are fantastic. They're fucking with Ron Perlman. Um, Don't see the David Harbor one. The, it's the, pretty bad. The, the 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 remake there with uh, uh, Dave Harbor was not so good. I mean, you had Ian McShane in it, and he was completely wasted as well too. Some oh, of the that's C- right. Parts yes. of the CGI looked good, and then parts of it was really fucking awful. So. Yeah, it wasn't a terribly. I mean, the new one. I mean, honestly, man. I. I mean, see it if you want to. If you got. If you got the spare time to give away. Didn't do well with a lot of the fans. Yeah, it's 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 just kind of a garbage movie in yep. general. Yep. Um, just so. not very good. Which sucks because I love David Harbour. He's a fucking yeah, amazing yeah, actor. So. Uh, my next favorite remake. Well, this is no particular order. It's just the three that really stood out to me. 1982's The Thing, a remake of 1951's The Thing from Another World. This one was directed by John Carpenter, the horror master himself, mm-hmm. uh, starring Kurt Russell, Keith David, and Wilford Brimley. He's got the diabetes. Mm-hmm. I wonder if he had it back then. He probably had it then. He didn't eat his Quaker oatmeal until later. He didn't eat his Quaker oatmeal. But the reason I love this movie is because uh, I have actually seen The Thing from Another World. It's black and white. And it was a decent, it was a somewhat decent flick, but I think the thing that makes th- the thing that makes this version, the 1982 version, superior is because back in 1951, they simply did not have right. the ability to create the practical effects that 1982's thing is known for. Mm-hmm. And it made the movie that much better. It was grotesque, it was terrifying. Uh, there were several really intense scenes that weren't quite you know a lot of the stuff is also reinterpreted a little bit but like overall as a remake oh my god like this you you can tell this is one of those movies where it benefited from the time jump going in you know having that 30 years of of improving you know things like special mm-hmm. effects and things of that nature this is a movie that thrived off that took an awesome premise an awesome story and brought it forward and made it more compelling yeah. with the practical effects and the and the acting and the performances this movie is fucking awesome. Huge fan of the thing, and it's one of the best remakes out there. One period. of the best movies of all time. It's really one of the best horror films of all period. time, man. It's fucking period. amazing. I mean, I, I can criticize one thing, but we're not going to go there right now. <laughs> uh, next up for a movie that I don't get a graphic for. I don't know what that's all about, everybody, right? I, I didn't know, get least. these ahead of time. I didn't get any fucking graphics, no. Um, uh, This is a mix of it when I say this. Now, I want to say, by preface this, is that I actually don't hate this movie, um, there's some elements that I actually really liked, mm-hmm. um, but it's not like a, I don't even know if it's really a good no, movie, neither, Crash. Um, but RoboCop 2014. Yeah. I know you've spoken about that cause you're a big fan of Joe Kinnaman. Yeah. And I, and I think Michael Keaton did a great job in it as well too. Mm-hmm. Um, but RoboCop did not need to be remade. Yeah. RoboCop also back in the day used a lot of practical effects. It was, this movie was more trying to be dark and real and it missed all like the satire and the levity. Oh, which... another Paul Verhoeven film. And I'll mention my, my version. Sure. Remake yeah, of yeah. It. Go ahead. So, so you know what I mean? So, so like I said, I actually don't hate this movie. I, I, I've actually watched it a couple of times, but I think overall with fans and everybody, like it, it, it could easily have just not happened. Yeah. And I think that's fair. And to go, I'm, I'm going to piggyback off this before I get to my next one that I really adore. I'm going to go to my shit remakes. And it's funny that you mentioned that because I completely forgot about RoboCop. Had that satire, that Mm. self-awareness, the levity mixed in with the awesome violence and the uh, typical action stuff. The 80s was renowned with their action movies to have some form of levity, Mm -hmm. some Mm self-awareness, and usually a villain that was a little bit more charming than you would expect from a villain. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Another movie just like that, another Paul Verhoeven film, Mm -hmm. Total Recall. Oh, yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger's Total Recall was fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. It was satire. There was dark humor. It was ultra-violent. It was a fucking sweet, absurd 80s action movie. Awesome film. Great film. You come back to the new one with Colin Farrell, who's a great actor. Kate Beckinsale, she's bae. But it was completely devoid of all that fucking humor. The satire. It didn't have it. It tried to be dark and gritty and more grounded. I don't fucking want that, bro. You can't take something as absurd as Total Recall and try to like squeeze it into this fucking surreal, right. gritty setting. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't work because the first one was so effective and so good at it. Mm-hmm. Nobody went to the Total Recall with Arnold Schwarzenegger and said, man, I hope they redo this in 20 years and make it fucking gritty. This sucks. 
<laughs> like <laughs> there are man, I completely forgot that the old man, the guy in RoboCop who falls out of the building is the same guy that's uh yeah he's in yeah man yeah. Paul Verhoeven loved him man yeah yeah uh would Juman- Jumanji count as a remake I, yeah because I think so I think originally it was a board game that got turned into a video game and it was a whole different thing I'd imagine yeah or is he talking about comparing the Robin Williams one with uh, yeah yeah uh, okay I think, yeah, yeah, be, yeah. I think that'd probably be a remake. Uh, the new mummy. That of Tom is also uh, uh, that. That's actually in like one of the worst remakes, like rated. J Hill. Yeah. Dread, I, no, Dread no, no the Brendan Fraser remake. mummy movie. I thought the Brendan Fraser one was good. Yeah. Because there was a mummy movie before that that inspired that one. So I mean, the second remake was shit with Tom Cruise. Mm-hmm. The Brendan Fraser one was sweet. Dread was a solid Dread remake. With, yeah, Dread with Carl Urban is Carl uh, infinite dude. It was hilarious because I just messaged you about a month ago. I was on t- I was out serious watching TV mm-hmm. and all of a sudden uh, Judge Dread with Stallone was on mm-hmm. and I was just like, this movie is fucking trash. Yeah, I this a week, week later the new one came. I was like, so much better. <laughs> I think because I I loved that movie as a kid. I don't. I just don't hate the Stallone one. I get it, but the Dread one is so so fucking good. So, uh, going on to my uh, final choice for one of the best remakes. Uh, it chapter one mm-hmm. specifically. It chapter two is fine, uh, but it chapter one was just such a massive improvement over the series. Now I understand the series was a limited series and whatnot, but uh, it's a remake nonetheless. Um, we'll talk about. I think Evil Dead's a good one to discuss as well. I mean, like, like I said, man, I want to get you guys and girls' thoughts, man. Is there? There's the Evil Dead remake that I know people don't hate that movie as much as I, a lot of people thought. I thought Once they were I going thought, to. I was like, I actually like it. A the lot. Evil Dead remake is actually really good. Yeah, it's pretty I thought it, good, and it does capture still some of the mm-hmm. the that that Raimi that Raimi magic. So I thought I did good there, but like the it chapter one, I loved it because. It was. It wasn't as corny. Everything outside of the Tim Curry performance in the original It is really kind of hard to watch. Yeah. The kids' side of it is still better than the adult side of it, mm-hmm. but this one, the kids were really, really good. They had great chemistry. Uh, it was. It was more um, closer to the source material with the books, with some of the stuff that they showcased in this movie. And you know, the biggest, the biggest thing, obviously, when this movie was announced, was like, how is Skarsgård? going to hold up and fill the shoes left behind by Tim Curry. Well, and I thought he did a fine job. Like, he did a really good job making that character unique to himself. Yep. He was still terrifying. Had a little bit of levity, not quite as over the top as Tim Curry, but effective nonetheless. And I really, really appreciate that because I felt like this was the best iteration of it uh, to make it to, on the big screen or even on TV. So I was really appreciative of it. I thought this was a really, really good remake and something that really benefited from maybe some extra time, some extra budget, and not being restricted to the small yeah. screen. Creepy. Um, so I've got – how do we want to do this? Because I know you've got a couple that you said are shit I already well called, covered Total Recall. The other, okay. only other two recent – and I know somebody covered Nightmare on Elm Street. That movie was fucking terrible because, again – if you look at that Nightmare on Elm Street, the recent one, I can't remember the the actor's name. It's the guy that played in The Watchmen is uh, Rorschach. Haley something, uh, Joe, Joe yeah. something. But anyways, he gets cast as Freddy Krueger and tries to go this super dark, fucking like just demonic Freddy Krueger. And dude, you can't do that and not pay a little homage to what mm-hmm. what how um Jack Hero Haley. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Jackie Earl K- Haley. Like, like Robert England made Freddy so fucking awesome mm-hmm. because Freddy was like again an '80s villain, kind of had some charmingness to him, had some levity, could make you laugh with some of the shit he said. Like, man, this guy's fucking nuts. Yeah, he didn't have that w- with Jackie Earl Haley. Mm-hmm. Just uh, yeah, he had that weird. Uh, I was like, okay, your voice sucks, and your car- your, and again, it's not so much his fault; it's the writing. Robert is Freddy and Freddy is Rob. Simple as that, dude. Like, whereas, like, wh- where um, Skarsgård was able to kind of match up with Tim Curry, Jackie Earl Haley is now Robert England and not in that role. Uh, what about Psycho? Uh, what they redid where they went word for word, shot for shot with Vince Vaughn. Remember that? He played Norman Bates. I'm a fan and of Hitch- Hayes. Sorry, I'm a fan of H- Hitchcock. Uh, I actually didn't. I we used to go back. I thought uh the original one was really creepy. Uh the the act again, I can't remember the actor's name, Anthony something, uh, who played Norman Bates, he was fucking creepy. Mm-hmm. Especially in that final scene where he's in the jail cell and like you get that over that uh the voiceover of the mother talking and he, he just has that look I was like, This guy's fucking creepy. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, what was that Seth Rogen movie that we made for Bruce uh, from the Bruce Lee joint? Oh, Green one. Hornet. Green Hornet. There you go. Uh, but like Psycho, I didn't. I didn't hate the Vince Vaughn one. I didn't hate it, but I thought it was unnecessary. Mm-hmm. Didn't really need to go there. You just, you basically just took this movie, like you said, shot for shot, mm-hmm. word for word, mm-hmm. everything identical with today's actors. Not necessary. Mm-hmm. I didn't hate it, but kind of forgettable because the original was just kind of like set that. That, that that tone and it's basically the same movie it doesn't do anything to like set itself apart from it mm-hmm. and doesn't really do anything to like you know it's just the same movie that i feel like that's just a, kind of a rip off yeah oh yeah if Absolutely. anything so <laughs> but continue you had some other ones well um well if you want let's finish your two since you only got two up just mention them and we'll two of the shit ones i hated were poltergeist and the omen yeah uh, with Liev Schreiber and Julia Stiles. The Omen remake is fucking garbage. And the Gregory Peck one is infinitely better. I feel like everybody kind of agrees with the Omen. At least I've heard that numerous Dude, the times. Dude, the, the Omen. Omen is fucking terrible. Like, it's really bad. And Poltergeist just doesn't have it, again, tried to be too g- dark and, like, serious. Yeah. Like I mean, obviously, the original Poltergeist was serious, but it's just that 80s charm, man. Like, you know, uh, uh, what's uh, Coach's name? The dad's name? Played Coach. Craig, uh, Craig, Craig T. Nelson. Nelson. Joe Beth Williams, you know, just so much better. Every now and then we get a gem. And once in a while. And I didn't mind the, the Peter King, uh, Peter Peter Jackson, King Kong. I actually love that movie. I didn't hate it. I thought it was decent. I yeah, thought it was pretty I, good. I really loved it, honestly. Big fan. Um, So my last three here. Uh, one, I'm going to start with this, with this one first. Uh, oh. This one I refuse to watch oh. Oh, because yeah. <laughs> of principle and integrity. Uh, is the white man can't jump from 2023 <laughs> with Jack Harlow? Because the original, much like some of the movies we've listed, mm-hmm. don't need to be re- like much probably like Roadhouse are a classic and do not de- need to be remade. Yeah. They this this no one said. You know what we should remake? White man can't jump, as if Sidney Dean and Billy Hoyle. <laughs> Woody Harrelson or Wesley Snipes needed somebody else to step into those shoes. Absolutely King Cuddle says night. maybe give it a try. No, nope. he didn't hate it. No, no, I, I, it, that that would be yeah. I don't sacrilegious. Can't do it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's about it, it starts with principle. It's the principle of the it's matter. The principalities involved first of all. It's so the principality. Absolutely Smokey? not. White Man Can't Jump is uh, a movie that I know I've talked about it a few times here, but oh, yeah. it was a movie that I watched, rewatched over. And fucking over and over and over. Like, I'm super, super fan of that. Much so. like why I can't stand, uh, I'm not super sold on this movie. Yeah. Is because of somebody in it. I don't, I don't like Jack Harlow. Yeah. I think Jack Harlow sucks. Yeah. And I see sure. it, I'm just like, I don't, I don't yeah, want to see him in a movie. I don't want to see Conor no. McGregor in a movie. No. Don't give a shit. Uh, another one that didn't need to be remade that was also um stupid uh, was uh, Karate Kid from 2010 with uh, Jackie I, Chan. I love and Jackie Will Chan. Kid? I love Jackie Chan. But. What you didn't need to do was try to have somebody come in and play a new Mr. Miyagi. That's, yeah. you know, some, and it some was roles are cherished. Man. Karate Kid, which is a Japanese form of martial art, and you have a gentleman who's got a Chinese background who would normally teach Kung Fu, and you're calling it Karate Kid. The logistics alone fucking made my brain hurt. Um, movie's awful, though. Except for when he kept telling the kid to, Jack it off! <laughs> Jack it off! <laughs> Um. Yeah. Yeah. Jay Hill. Um. You can go check that out on YouTube if you want. There's a video for that. <laughs> uh, and the last one I'm going to mention here, um, as like kind of an honorable mention oh, as well. To I didn't get I to think, know about this. Um, you didn't get to know about this one is absolutely 110 percent an unnecessary movie that didn't need to exist. Is Godzilla of 1998? Oh man. Period. You can. I mean, now nah, hold on. The Matthew Broderick one, right? Well, that's the 98, yeah. I mean, <sighs> yeah. I mean, it's not terrible. Good try. Watch I mean, it. everyone's going to, everyone has to try. I mean, Godzilla is left open for like multiple versions of it. Well, that one's not good. So <laughs> that's that. I can't really, man. The 2000, uh, go, to Ghostbusters Take a movie you really like, dude, that I you grew know, up with. I know. That's fair. That's fair. And that's bastardize fair. it. There you Honestly, go. Honestly, I didn't hate it, but I understand from your fandom tone. Yeah, I mean it's. Come on. I, I honestly, uh, if if I ever watch it, it's I don't want to say it's a guilty pleasure. It's just kind of like it's so bad, it's good. Like it's so bad that I'm just gonna laugh at how just goofy some of these scenes are. Because like like I said, Matthew Broderick just seemed like a fish out of water in that movie. Yeah. Every time he had a, a, any kind of dialogue, I was like, 
he sounds like he's saying these words like, why am I in this movie? With that same type of, like, of like attitude, like, why am I in this fucking movie, Every bro? time I think about an asexual Godzilla dropping eggs in Madison Square Garden, I want to rip my balls <laughs> off. So there's that. I mean, that's it's just twisting things a little bit. Yeah, sure. The <laughs> only thing that really, it's so weird that the cartoon was actually pretty good, though. But either way. Anyways, that is it. So we actually um, you know, talked about this this morning a little bit in the Discord. I really appreciate everybody just jumping in this morning. All of a sudden, we kind of went back and forth, and I actually didn't realize about the revival. So we're not going to dive into all that yeah, with revivals, a, dude, reboots, and remakes. Whole, whole, whole yeah. can of worms. But we want to talk about remakes specifically. Listen, there's some good ones. There's some bad ones. I think there's ones that are open to interpretation. I can see both sides of it. Sure. Some of them, listen, at the end of the day, my feelings is when it comes to this stuff, if technology was something that we needed more to get better of something out of maybe like thing, for instance, mm-hmm. out of, you know, the early eighties, that makes sense to me. But like when you're a movie that focuses mostly maybe on action yeah. or even dialogue such as roadhouse or maybe white man can jump, you don't need them to be remade. What you need to do Hollywood is make some fucking original stories or do something different, yeah. figure it out because the stuff is exhausting. It you is. know, and video games is also falling into it as well, too, I feel like. So, you know, it, it, it's just, it's silly. I mean, yeah, Fresh Prince of Bel- We can sit here, honestly, there's so much TV. Like, that's getting, I saw you guys mentioned some TV stuff. That, even that sometimes is a slippery slope as well, too. But there's so much things over there. These were just, I think, the biggest ones that hit the radar as well, too, for like far as just awful fucking remakes or, you know, things that did well to the uh, source material. So, God, but, that's what, and that's why, like, dude, I'm so thankful that, like a movie like Jaws, mm-hmm. it's timeless in a way. They don't do a whole. There's not a whole lot of stuff in the movie Jaws. If you go watch Jaws, and really think about, it, there's only a couple instances where there's stuff going on where you're like, oh, that didn't age well. Right, and that's that's no, the boat, the, the 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 radio they use on a boat, or the arcade game that the kids playing. Like th- those are things where you could just be like, that's kind of like weird. Right. Uh, right. But like, uh, for the most part, though, like you can watch Jaws be like, this holds up fucking well. You can today. you can watch Jaws right now, and you're like, this is a fucking awesome movie. Yeah, that's still at fucking no point do I feel like, shit. man, this, this right. feels dated. Right. It's just fucking a robot shark. Right. For awesome. Sure. Wasn't there a third thing remake in the 2010s? Yeah. So that that is a prequel. Um, it's a revival of that uh canon story but it's a prequel to the original 82 story when at the beginning of the 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 original thing movie when you see the helicopter coming in trying to shoot Uh. the dog from the norwegian base they focus on the norwegian base what was going on there you had joel edgerton in that you had uh what's her face mary mary louise mary mary elizabeth winstead as well too um we've talked about that briefly too before the 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 story and everything what they want to do in that movie is awesome the 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 CG is what literally pretty much ruins that. When movie. that it's studio uh, and dude, the thing is, they shot that movie with practical. Yeah, effects. and you said they scrapped it for CGI. They shot that movie with practical effects, which was what made the nineteen eighty two thing mm-hmm. so good, fucking good. And they opted to put in this fucking just absurd, poorly done CGI, and you're just like, dude, you fucking failed. Yeah, because yeah. it is a good story, dude. The way that it ties into the first mm-hmm. one. It's fucking awesome. It's, it's literally, it's it's so coherent. But Everything's there, but then when all the CG kicks in, you're just like, you it's, fucking it's had so one goddamn job. Yeah. Nobody remembers the thing 1982 for the story. Mm. I mean, it's good, but it's the practical effects that made it fucking... That's why it holds up so well. You can watch the 1982 thing right now and be like, man, this looks good. Mm. This still I looks fucking week. good and believable. Last week. Uh, you know, a movie uh, could have been improved on. <laughs> they should have wrecked Firestarter. Yeah. Right, Firestarter was meh back then, and they were like, you know what? We're just going to keep fucking it up. And you bring in somebody like Zach Efron, who's currently showing that he's a good actor, and they just make the story yeah. even fucking worse. He couldn't save it. So. Unbelievable. So we've seen some bad remakes. We've <clears throat> seen some decent attempts, and we've seen some really good ones. We want to know your guys' and girls' thoughts. If there's a remake out there that you absolutely adore or absolutely fucking despise, let us know in the comments below. We want to hear from you. I feel like this is a very divisive topic. It's a topic that can generate a lot of conversation, mm-hmm. and I love getting people's perspectives on stuff. I want to make a point to make out that I do not was not discrediting Jay Hill on whether or not he thinks Roadhouse looks good or not. I just wanted to show that, like, look, depending on a person's love for the source material and who's involved with the new one, like White Man Can Jump, mm-hmm. It's really easy to see different two different perspectives. He likes MMA. That looks cool. I'm not a super huge fan of the original. It's an easy way to I understand. I know he liked it, but you know this reminds me of I look at that and be like, this is a fucking disgrace. Mm-hmm. 
Is it good? No, I'll watch it and I will eat fucking crow if it's good. But I have no, I have very low expectations for that movie. Mm-hmm. Out of the respect for the original. I know I mentioned Ocean's Eleven in the Discord, but for real, that's an incredible remake. The first movie is ass. That's the thing. I did watch the original, and it is just not nearly as entertaining. And, that and dude, I mean, like, back then, that cast was hot. The original Ocean's, that Frank Sinatra, all of, I mean, that was a hot cast. And two thousand or this new one, the, or the, the, uh, the George Clooney-led one, awesome cast, but just way more entertaining. Mm-hmm. Way more energy. Well, they're, real, they're actually actors. Italian so. Job. There's another good one. Man, Italian Job is pretty cool. Like I said, I love Casino Royale. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I forgot that there was an original, uh, uh, mm-hmm. a first one version of that. Was that the? That wasn't with. Uh, that wasn't with Sean Connery, was it? Thought it was. Was it? I don't know. I'm not. I'm not versing my. Bond I couldn't remember if it was that one movie with the one guy that played Bond one time. <laughs> right, right, right. But uh, all right, well. I got to pee. So oh, he's got to pee. We should hey, wrap it up. Let us know your thoughts on remakes. But-